Hey guys, Jam here, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to quickly turn this guy into this guy, a Deathwing Strike Master. Now for those of you that don't know what a Deathwing Strike Master is, basically the Dark Angels first company, the Veterans and Elites, are known as the Deathwing, and the Strike Master is basically kind of a lieutenant, or lieutenant depending on where you're from, and I thought it'd be a really cool model to be leading my new Dark Angels army. Now one thing I always do with these easy build dudes that have the pegs and all that is I will trim at least a little bit off if not just cut it off completely. Now I particularly want to get the one on the head here because I'm going to be putting it in my own head so I don't need this giant peg poking out. But now that I cleaned the model up I got rid of any pegs I didn't want. I had to sort out the base. Now the base is really cool so you don't have to really do this step I guess. It just doesn't fit my theme for my Dark Angel so far. So I'm just going to take my hobby clippers and I'm going to be cutting away this tuned head and all the gribbly bits and all that kind of stuff. And so I use the clips to get rid of the big chunks and I'll come in later with a hobby knife to get rid of a bit more. But once again it doesn't need to be perfect because you know later I'm going to be putting sand down and leaves and all that stuff so if there's any bits that don't look great I will just cover it up with that. And speaking of covering things up, as you can see the base has got a giant gap in the side of it now. But later I will be filling that in with some green stuff and stones. Now one of the first decoration-y bits I do to this model is I slice off the little trophy thing on the top of the armor. To be honest it is really cool and it is kind of gothic and dark angel-y so it could probably work. But I've got dark angel bits lying around and why not pizzazz the guy up a little bit. So. As you can see on the screen, I was kind of toying around with maybe giving him a giant back banner because, you know, those are always sweet to have. But in the end, if you see GW's version of the Strike Master, he's got the two wings on the top of his armor and I thought that looked really sweet. Makes the guy really stand out, so that's what I'm going to go for. Now the wings actually fit pretty much perfectly on the new upgraded Terminator armor. I did need to make some small little cuts here and there just to make sure that it fit in nice and flush but didn't take much work there to be honest and just glued them on make sure they were standing up nice and straight and that's a very quick and simple way to make this model look super different like I said this is all gonna be quite simple stuff today now the next thing to do to give this model a nice unique look and quite simply as well it takes slightly more patience than the wings though and that's adding studs to his like really boring left hand leg. I thought this guy's supposed to be leading my army, he's kind of got that gothic death wing vibe to him. I gotta get some studs in there at least. Now I actually used to do this by just rolling out balls of green stuff. Then I saw Pete the Wargamer use one millimeter ball bearings, at least I think that's what he used, that's what I use. And you just gotta drill tiny little holes into the surface that you want them. So this actually works really really nice. Now what I usually do is I use a sharp hobby knife to kind of make a pilot hole so I get it where I want and I just gently start twisting and pushing it into the, th into the armor. Then if you want you can get a tiny little one millimeter drill bit and you can start widening the hole. Obviously you don't want to go too deep into the armor because you want half of the ball to stick out. Now in some cases I could just use the hobby knife. I did, I've done it before and I do it in this project as well. So just twist in the hobby knife to make the hole making sure you don't go too deep and it works out pretty well. Now just remember to always do a bit of the hold and get the ball bearing that you want. Test where it's kind of fitting and then make the hole bigger if you need to because once the hole's too big it, it's kind of hard to fix. Now I didn't align my like holes in the perfect place. In hindsight I probably should have used a marker and planned it out a bit, a bit better but I just kind of went for it. Now to actually glue them into the model what you want to do is get some super glue and just dip a toothpick into it and just dab the super glue into the hole and just pop your ball bearing in there and that should stay in there nice and tight. On a side note and a bit of a tip here when you're working with your ball bearings make sure you have some sort of tub underneath where you're doing it because a lot of the times they'll fall out or fall off your finger or whatever and they'll just bounce everywhere. I don't know why but these things are super bouncy. I've lost so many of them so have some sort of tub underneath you just to catch them. But there you have it. A couple small holes and one millimeter ball bearings and you've got a completely different looking leg now. Now as much as I like the rest of this model 
I felt like the front needed a little bit more, especially as a Dark Angel and this guy leading my army, he needs a bit more something. So I wanted to put a green stuff loincloth, but I also don't, I didn't want to lose the really cool kind of parchment thing that's flowing between his legs. So I wanted to keep that, which obviously means getting a loincloth in there was going to be slightly more complicated, but still easy enough and definitely worth it. So all I do here is I grab just your usual amount of green stuff, you know, 50-50 between blue and yellow. Remembering to always keep your surface, your hands and your tools wet at all times while working with green stuff. And I made a fat little sausage out of the green stuff that I've made up and you can use your paintbrush handle, anything round, kind of rolling pin shaped. And I just gently flattened it out, not too much because you want to have a bit of strength in there once it's on the model. And once I had it all rolled out, I just kind of cut the green stuff into the shape that I wanted. Now obviously because I'm keeping the parchment in there, I had to cut kind of weird shape just to try and get it in there, but eventually figured it out and I popped it in there. And as always, like I was saying, all my kid bashing videos, always be mindful of the direction of the model. So I wanted this loincloth to be flowing in the same direction as his cape and that parchment in the front as well. So I got it mostly drifting off to that direction. I didn't add much detail like folds into this because it's such a small little section but I do use my paintbrush to kind of move it into places that I wanted and smooth it out get rid of any tool marks fingerprints and stuff like that and then gently press in a fold down the right hand side of this cloth just so there's a bit of a ripple in it but now obviously on the left hand side of that skull belt buckle thing whatever that is there is no loincloth there so it doesn't quite look right so I just cut a kind of triangular piece of green stuff and get it into that corner there and once again I just use a wet paintbrush or you know, like silicon wax tools and all that kind of stuff. Move it into position, maybe add a little bit of a, a fold in there, but it's like a very small section so it's not super important. The only thing I wanted to make sure I did was make sure the loin clothy bit looks like it's tucked underneath the purity seal. So I made sure I pushed it down quite a bit where it touches that bit. You don't want it to be going over because that wouldn't make any sense. And that's what the model is currently looking like. Like I said before, very simple green stuff loincloth thingy there, but I think it really helps the model stand out. But now speaking of green stuff, I had a little bit left over, so I'm going to whip up a very, very simple feather. Because feathers are a kind of random reoccurring theme throughout the Dark Angels. And speaking of feathers, I've shown a lot of this stuff already on my giant Dark Angels army video that I made quite a while ago, a few months back. That took a, a lot of time and effort to make and uh, like I said, I've shown pretty much most of the stuff I'm doing here today in there as well. So definitely go check out that video, it's quite a big one. But back to this video, as you can see on the screen, I cut out a very rudimentary kind of feather shape. It's kind of like a long diamond and then all I do is I use my hobby knife to gently press in a line straight down the middle of the feather so that kind of acts as the vein or whatever that's called <laughs> I don't really know and then I do a lot of small lines running up the side of that now later we can kind of paint in more detail and stuff like that but this is a nice quick and simple way to get feathers onto your models and once I do have the feather where I want it, I do go back in with my hobby knife and maybe kind of split some of the ends and just give it a bit more of a dynamic feel. I don't know if dynamic's the right word for it, but it's not very flat. I just, you know, open it up a bit more. Now back to slightly more simple stuff. I needed a hooded head for this guy. I really wanted to keep with that kind of gothic look at something that makes it really stand out as Dark Angels and that's always a hooded head. Now I do have the Deathwing Terminator kit which comes with loads of head options, weapons, accessories and stuff like that. So if you're doing a Dark Angels army, definitely pick up the Deathwing Knights kit or just Deathwing Terminators. But basically, I picked a head out of there that I already liked, but the neck part's kind of kind of got that ball point joint to it. So all I did was I snipped that off, I kind of filed it down. I just kept going back and forth trying to see if it fit where I wanted to. I eventually had to cut a bit of the back of the head as well because it wasn't quite going deep enough into the hood. But yeah, nothing much really to say there. I just kind of went back and forth with my sanding and snipping till the head fit in where I wanted it to. 
But one of the last things I do now, because this guy's quite busy already, he's got a lot going on, he doesn't have much space. I just glued on this giant incense ball with a bit of rope dangling from it just to give him a little bit more going on, but also give him that Dark Angel vibe. And I just slapped it on his belt and that's pretty much that, to be honest, nothing fancy there. But now the last thing I do do is I was looking at the cape on the back and I realized it's quite tattered and torn. Whereas my loincloth was just kind of flat and smooth. So all I did here was I went in with my hobby knife. Not going too over the top, but I just kind of sliced out a small little chip out of the bottom of the loincloth. And drilled the tip into the green stuff a little bit just to make it look like it's been nipped a bit there. Maybe a bullet's pierced it or something like that. And that's that. I just wanted to add that little bit of texture so it fits in with the cape and the model is done. Now I'm going to go paint this bad boy up and I'll get back to you guys with a little showcase. And there we have him ladies and gents in all his death wing glory. Now as you can see this guy's not 100% done. I still got to do his power sword and highlight a few things, but I actually wanted to get this video out at some point, so hopefully this was enough to bring him to life. One thing I did actually try on this model was a bit more of a, a textured highlighting technique on the cloth and stuff like that, as you can see. I thought it turned out pretty decently for a first go, and I, I'm starting to move away from more like edge, super clean edge highlights and glazing and stuff like that. I want to go a bit more quick and easy loosey-goosey kind of battle worn stuff that's what i want to try and experiment with now but that's besides the point completely let me know what you thought of the video what did you think of this guy does he look like he could be leading a dark angels army or a lieutenant of the death wing and of course as always definitely like share subscribe all that nonsense you know the drill by now you've been on youtube for long enough and if you fancy it, maybe uh, join my YouTube membership or Patreon. There is some perks in there. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.